Good morning, foxes. Welcome to Wake Up With Coach, day two. This is fun. Today, you probably guess where I'm at right now just by seeing that board. The one that you stare at every single time you come into PE. That's right, I'm a coach. I figure if you're at home, you gotta be staying in shape. You gotta stay strong. And exercise and working out and having fun is part of that. So today, we're gonna be showing you a bunch of games and things you can do at your house with very little amount of material and even some big sport activities to help you practice while away from school or your teams or anything else like that or if you just like to do fun. All right, let's get to it. All right, I asked Scott to come out today to help us out with this next segment. Basketball. Now, the cool thing about basketball is you can learn so much during it, and you can just have a ton of fun playing it. But you know what? Unless you actually practice and put the time in that you need to improve, it's never going to get better. Okay, in the game of basketball, there is an acronym. That means letters that we use to help signify or stand for something inside a word. The word you want to remember is BEEF, B-E-E-F. The four things you need to shoot a good free throw, and then you get really good like Michael Jordan who could do it with his eyes closed. First thing, B, is balance. You'll notice as you look at Scott's feet, his feet are shoulder width apart. That's right, almost directly straight underneath him. One foot is slightly out in front. That's the right foot if you are a right-handed shooter. It's the left foot, switch it, Scott, if you are a left-handed shooter. There you go. Okay, go back. Number two, the second letter, E, is eyes. Look where Scott focuses his eyes. He's going to look right where he's going to shoot at. It could be the front of the rim, if you're a front of the rim shooter, or a back of the rim, if you're the back of a rim shooter, okay? The next E is elbow. Look where Scott's elbow is right now. You want your elbow almost straight down underneath that ball, and you're gonna make a square with it, just like Scott's showing you right now. You're gonna make a square, okay? And you wanna keep it in next to your stomach, into your chest, and it's going to aim straight at that hoop, okay? The last letter is called F, and it means follow through. Now, Scott, what he's going to do is when he reaches up, he's going to wave goodbye to the basketball. That's your follow through. It puts a spin on the ball, and it also gives you the power that you need to send it up. Now, he's not just gonna stand there. Do you see what he's doing with his knees? He'll bend his knees and uses his legs up onto his toes to shoot a free throw. Let's watch him do one. Right in, perfect. Okay, now Scott had a brilliant idea. He said, why don't we practice like with a garbage can? And I think that's awesome. If you don't have a basketball hoop at home, just grab your dad's garbage can or something outside, maybe a big basket, and you can practice this way. You're gonna make 10 steps. Now these are feet. You're gonna put one foot right in front of the other, and if your feet's a little bit small, that's okay. It doesn't really matter, be perfect. But you wanna be 10 steps out to give you uh, the distance about the same as that of a free throw in a basketball court, okay? Now, he's gonna do the exact same practice, bending of the knees, balance on his feet, his eyes looking at the rim, his elbow square, and follow through. Now, you just saw Scott practicing free throws. It was awesome, he did a great job of demonstrating it to us. But, and this is really cool, you don't need to just do it with a basketball. Go home, grab one of your socks, roll it up into a little ball, and practice shooting at the, the laundry basket or into the uh, little sister who's sitting on the other side of the couch or the uh, little brother who's being annoying. Anybody like that, you can practice this shooting anywhere. It's also a great way to get into like a, a sock battle. Hmm, maybe even Mom and Dad can get into one of those. Those are a lot of fun too, because it helps you learn how to throw. Ooh, good ideas. Keep thinking about it. Okay, the next sport I want to tell you about is football. Now, I love football. Football's fantastic, a lot of fun, but it, it can be really, really technical, and there's lots of rules and things that go with it. 
but everybody likes to get out and throw a football. So I'm going to show you the proper way of throwing a football. And just like with the basketball, there are some kind of key things you got to remember. The first one is where you put your hand on a football. Some people like to hold it in the middle, some people need to hold it in the front. You want to hold it almost completely in the back. You notice on my finger, my middle finger lays against that last little niche in the football. And the other fingers spread out kind of big. Now I have big hands, some of you may not. Be. Now you can use any ball size you want to practice throwing. It doesn't really matter. This is just a junior size, one that normally would be one we'd use here at school, and you'd be able to throw this around. You can get a Nerf, throw it with a friend. You can throw a Nerf around, and you know, not with anybody. Just go run and pick it up and throw it again. Fly one up. But the first thing is grip. So you've got to know where to hold the ball the right way. The second thing is stance. Now, football is very different than a baseball throw because you don't throw the exact same way, but the motion is very similar. You'll notice once again, I have one foot out in front of the other and you are going to step with that front foot. Now, different from basketball, remember, basketball, if you're right-handed, you put your right foot forward. Football, you put your left foot forward because you're gonna step with this foot because this foot's gonna give you your power. So as you step, you want to transfer the weight from one foot to the other, moving forward, okay? Now, my hips, point in the other direction. I need my hips because that's where most of the power comes from in a throw. So as you step and I point my toe to where I'm going, I'm going to transfer the back hip and I'm going to try and swap it to the front hip. Okay? All that momentum. So it's going to look like this. Notice what my shoulder automatically did. I haven't even raised the ball anywhere. It's going to automatically transfer my weight and throw that whip motion with my arm. Now, when you add the arm, a lot of people like to do this, or this, or this, or this, or all sorts of stuff. Make it simple on yourself. You never want to extend your arm out. Just like basketball, you want to keep that L shape. But the difference is, instead of trying to throw it like this, you're going to want to throw it over the top of your head, just like a straight line. So as you're stepping and transferring your weight, the ball's going to come right over the top of your head. Because you're going to get all that momentum like a whip and you're going to send it forward, okay? So step, throw over the top. Now when you're throwing, just like in basketball, when you shot that free throw and you wave goodbye, you're going to do almost the exact same thing with the football. As you step forward, you're going to wave goodbye with your hand. So by the time you're done, you're going to be looking like this. Okay? Make sense? Now, you're not going to get it your first time. It'll take a few times, lots of practice, but you'll get it. The more you throw, the easier it'll become. Remember, balance, energy step forward from one foot to the other, transfer of that energy through your hips, rotate your shoulders over the top. Pretty simple, wave goodbye. We just demonstrated how to throw a football. It is not something that is just easy. If you just want to pick something up and throw, it, it, Everybody knows how to do that, it's very simple. But in order to get a really good throw with lots of power and lots of energy, there is a technique to it. So, you gotta practice. That doesn't mean you have to do it, you know, with somebody, yeah, you can do it alone. You can even lay down on the ground on your back and practice raising that arm up and throwing it up to the ceiling and letting it come right back down and you catch it. I used to do that in front of movies all the time. A lot of practice, a lot of fun. But the idea is you can learn how to throw properly. Just another fun idea. All right, I asked Scott to come help us with this one too. Jump rope is something you can do at home. You don't even need a real jump rope for it. You can use a normal rope. You can do it in your backyard, in your garage. The idea here is to get your feet moving. Now, jump rope is what we call a universal exercise. It is fantastic for every sport. It helps you move your feet faster. You can do a two foot jump like Scott's doing. Notice how he speeds up. Oh. See, that's a good one right there. He knocked his hat off. He could do a one foot jump and you can alternate back and forth between the feet too. So, any of these you wanna do, give yourself 30 seconds. Time yourself and get going really fast, really slow, do it high, do it short. The more of these you do, the better your footwork will be in all sports. Awesome. 
Scott just showed us how to do jump roping. Jump roping is a lot of fun. If you get a rope long enough, you can do it with two people. You can do it by yourself anytime you want. Do it to music and have a lot of fun doing it. The more you do it, the more it's going to make you better. Why don't we go check out some things in the office? Maybe there's some things we can do that are even easier and less energized. All right, we were just out there in the gym having a great time learning about some big sports. And I know those are, 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 are really harder sports. We only covered little tiny bits, a little bit how do you throw a football. We didn't talk about catching. We didn't talk about running. We didn't talk about all that type of stuff. We talked about shooting a basketball, only a free throw, because when you shoot the basketball, it's a little bit different than the free throw. But we can get into that another time. But we just showed you a little bit, of cu a couple of things. Now, jump rope is something I hope you guys do all the time. It doesn't matter if you're in dance or karate or basketball or soccer or any sport, anything you like to do that takes a lot of energy, jump rope can help with. It's one of those really good exercises that always makes you better. So I also wanted to teach you a couple of fun games that you really don't have to put uh, a big amount of energy into. Little ones that you can do right at home with simple things. Let's check it out. There's another game I want to teach you. I have played it since I was a little kid. I love it. It's loads of fun. But check it out. It takes a little bit of preparation first. This game is called Table Football. You may probably think, football, that's a big scary game. No, 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 no. This is a game for everybody to play. It isn't any different for anybody else. You're going to love it. It takes a piece of paper, a simple piece of paper, and usually two people. Okay? But to make the football is the most important thing. Let me show you how. First thing you're going to do is you're going to get a piece of paper, any old piece of paper that you want. Okay? You're going to fold it in half, right down the middle, the long way, just like this. Okay? When you're done, you should have a nice crease down the middle. When you have a crease like that, you're going to want to get a pair of scissors or maybe rip it, but you want to rip it right down that crease. So you're going to have two pieces just like this. When you have two pieces just like this, you're going to take one of those pieces and you're going to fold it in half again, the long way, just straight down like that. Okay? Now here comes the tricky part. You're going to take that piece of paper and you're going to start folding into triangles. And the way you do that is you start one corner on one side and you fold it right up till it reaches the other side. So you have a fold looking just like that, okay? Now you're gonna keep doing that fold exactly the same way until your paper gets all short, okay? So you fold it back and forth. Back and forth. Now sooner or later, as you are getting all really far down folding of this paper, you're gonna end up with one that looks like this where it's just that little bit left on the very end, okay? When you get to that, this is where it comes a little bit tricky. You're gonna take the opposite corner of that triangle, notice how there's a little bit left there, opposite corner, and you're gonna fold that in, so now you have one big, giant triangle. Now, you'll notice on your paper, there's a little slip right there, you can slide it in. So you're gonna fold it up inside and make your triangle fit all together like that doesn't matter you can have straight corners perfect corners it doesn't really matter this is your football for the game now here's the rules of the game and i love it it's really pretty simple you can play with somebody else first off you find yourself a table maybe uh it could be something as small as like a desk to a giant dining room table whatever you like to do and then you take that football and you want to flick it by standing it up down the field and you want to try and get it as close to the other person's end of the table as you are. When that table or that football, you want to land it so it lands just barely off the edge. When you do that, that's a touchdown. So it means your last couple of flicks may be actually really, really soft. But you want to get it so a piece of your football lays off the edge. Okay? That's called a touchdown. You get six points for that. The second you get a touchdown, then you get to kick a field goal. Now, field goals can be lots of fun. You can do it different ways. I've had some people that will make straws with a shape like this, uh, where they're sticking out of a little cup. You know, they, they can you know, put in the middle of the field. Or I've had people I've played with, they really just put their hands like this. And your job is from the other side of the field, mark off where everybody hits from. You're going to plant that football 
hold it down just like you were normally playing the game, and you're gonna try and click it through those uprights. If he goes through, you get an extra point. That's table football. I have loved playing it. Give it a shot. You might. Okay, I got another game for you. This game is called Pitching Pennies, and it's really, really simple. You only need a bunch of pennies and cups. I think it be any type of cup you want to use. I would suggest plastic cups because they're a little bit easier, but you don't want them to be real flimsy, that type of thing. You're just going to do it like you would in an arcade game if you were at a, uh, a theme park or Disneyland or something like that. Just place your cups out there and you can do different colors like I've got here, or you can do all the same color, doesn't matter, or you can just do one cup or one cup, doesn't matter. Sometimes I, you know, I will I'll place them at different lengths. One's a little bit farther away than the other, and I'll play. But all I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try to toss that penny right inside that cup. Now, it gets harder the farther away, but it is a lot of fun. So give that one a try. Okay, now the reason why I'm showing you all this is that you don't have to be bored at home. You don't want to watch movies and computer games and screens all day long. It's not going to help you. Now I know online does put you in front of a screen and does get you in front of computers, but you don't have to spend your entire day there. The best exercise you can get, the best energy building you can do is outside or moving around or running or playing. It doesn't have to be with a computer. Or a TV. So I'm showing you just a few of these things today. There are tons of them out there. You can find them online. You can do them all sorts of places. Ask mom and dad. They probably have some cool games that they played when they were a kid. And I'm going to give you a list here of a whole bunch of other games that you can have or you can play with some instructions and things like that that you can just have a great time doing. Give them a shot. I think you're going to find that you're really going to like them. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you again tomorrow. See you later.